Hey guys, welcome back to Overtakes. This is Kel. And this is Misfit. And we're here with the first of our series of going through every every team and ranking them in their tier list. Uh, so we have four different tiers that we're going to look at with all these teams. Today we're going to start with our top tier. We're also going to hit on the recent changes that they've made on the PTR. Uh, a lot of the big things that are coming. The patch notes that were just released yesterday. Uh, it's big. Yeah, really big. And... Uh you know, we wanted to we wanted to go in depth on the team, so we didn't. We're not just going to rank rank them in any kind of order right now. We'll yeah. do that probably the week before the season starts, mm-hmm. right after we get that little the alleged. It hasn't been anything really released from the Overwatch League on this preseason weekend that they're supposed to have. Yeah, but um, yeah, but but it, we'll do our final list of that. We're just doing groups of teams that we think you know where they're going to finish. We're going to do four different groups. Or just kind of how we're ranking them right now. Like yeah. we're gonna have our top tier, our mid tier, our bottom tier, and then the kind of question mark. Like they could be anywhere from top to bottom, somewhere in there, but we just don't really know yet. Yeah. Uh, so there's a few teams in there, but well, so let's let's talk a little bit about the um, the patch notes first. Yeah, I think this is going to be really important. This is big news. This this has a huge impact on what's going to happen in the league because I mean, the timing of this is very very convenient. Yeah, for for when the league is going to start because I mean we got uh, just over a month to go. Like yeah, I believe thirty six days until uh, yeah the season kicks off and. Now, I'm sure you guys at this point have seen the patch notes. Basically, basically a torching armor. Yeah. Which doesn't sound like a big deal, but the way the meta has been working with goats and all that, big deal. They nerfed, this is a big one for the league. They nerfed D.Va's defense matrix cooldown to two seconds. I think these guys are still going to play her. Yeah. But you're not going to get the heavy dives with D.Va. They're trying to pull her back a little bit, I think, so she's not a must-pick all the time. Right. Well, because that is part of the problem is, like, she's just so good at so many different things that it's like she just is viable in every single comp, so you want to... You want to... You want some variety. I feel like this is going to kind of open things up a little more so you can get some... uh, So you can see some Wrecking Ball in there and just some of the other off-tanks can be a little more viable and just get picked more frequently in general. Well, or so you thought until yeah. you read the rest of the patch notes where you saw Reaper is getting the Doomfist treatment from five months ago where it's like, okay, you guys are sick of tanks. He's going to heal 50% of the damage he's, he deals. So what that means is you go in with Reaper and you just start shooting tanks and you're not going to die. So, and you're going to destroy tanks because that's his main, his main objective from the start I, was to be the tank buster. Yeah. With the, the, the dual shotguns, the heavy damage, you know, get in there, get in there and then get out with Wraith form. And then that's going to open up with the way they've been playing supports. That's going to open up the, uh, the Bay Blade again. Yep. So basically we're looking at, I'm saying, I'm going to call this kind of early. We're going to be looking at it like a heavy DPS meta to start. Where you're going to say three, maybe four DPS? Because yeah. I, I know some Korean teams have been playing around with four DPS anyway before these things to Reaper. Because, I mean, are you really going to... All these off tanks and stuff in there with Reaper in there? Because they're going to bring Reaper in when they run GOATS. Because he's not going to die. Yeah. And you're just going to charge that ult. And then you have another... And most of, most of the teams are using Ana as their main support. So you just nano boost Reaper with the... Whatever that... The, his die, die, die shitty ultimate that actually with makes that press, ultimate be- <laughs> with his i press q you die yeah the de- uh, death blossom mm. <laughs> yes that's what it's called i haven't played him in so long that i, I know, forgot right? what the fuck the name that's, of his alt was and you don't ever see him unless well you, if you're in my tier you see him because people are dumb that's how irrelevant he's been for so long yeah and well and they're making everyone else that was irrelevant with the armor thing relevant again yeah soldiers viable mccree's been viable with the fan the hammer but you, you're just upping the the hit scan viability. Yeah. I and think this same thing the with one Tracer. thing that kind of sucks is it makes Widow a little more viable again, but then at the same time, I think with the they're still gonna want more heroes with mobility. mobility. So you're gonna see more Tracer and Genji. Yeah, you're like gonna- those kind of heroes. Cause that's I mean honestly, if we're being honest with how they want the Overwatch League to be perceived 
they want those heroes in there. They yeah. want Genji. They want Tracer because those are the players that take a lot of skill. They have they make the flashiest plays. Yeah, it's it, and it's it's the same way in any sport. Yeah. If if you look at it, if you look at hockey in the late nineties, the New Jersey Devils did this trap system where they basically dump the puck, pl- play back, and then you know shoot kind of like on power plays and stuff like that. Games were one to nothing, two to one. People didn't like that. So they eliminated blue lines and things like this. They did a whole bunch of things to bring the offense back. The NBA in the early 2000s, where you had, you know, the... Uh, just the... the <laughs> Detroit. Like, hey, we're gonna, yeah, it's just going to be like 89 to... 84. 84 was a high-scoring game. Yeah. Or the NFL, when you have a run-heavy... Yeah. You know, it's run like, the ball oh, and hey, play it's, defense, it's, it's 6-3 is a... Yeah. You, you don't want to watch that. Mm-mm. There are, no, know, they want they want what basically what the NBA has turned into, where you're scoring 130 points a game on average almost. Yeah, and that's what the Overwatch League wants. They want they want Tracer and Soldier, and you know they want quick movement. Genji, they want the big plays. You know, you still yeah. get big plays from Widow and these kind of things. If there's five tanks out there and you have a Widow, you're just what are you doing? But he says. Even the supports and the tanks that it's yeah. going to to bring in are going to be better because now because you're not going to have as much diva. You might still have diva, but she's going to have kind of have a role shift. You might even see a diva diva wrecking ball be yeah. viable because of the mobility of those two and just the the ability to just get in there and disrupt. Yeah, is going to be huge, especially with wrecking ball and the way that some of these guys play wrecking ball. And then the supports as well. You're going to see a lot more Anna. You're going to see some Zen. You're going to see uh, Lucio. Lucio. You're probably going to see less Mercy. Yes. Um, more Moira. I, I'm, I'm assuming. Just uh, by the, I'm, I would say we see more Mercy than we do Moira. Uh, just because Mercy's like, a little bit more mobile. Moira is better with the with the big heavy everybody yeah, yeah, that's together. True. Uh, she just because she doesn't have long range heels. Yeah. I mean, she has her ball, but. That's not reliable enough as opposed to like an Anna who can, I mean, you can heal somebody from across the map basically with Anna. Same and with Zed. Uh, Lucio is a little bit different, but he, his mobility makes up for that. Yeah, and he does more damage than people yes. really want to give him credit for, especially with the way these guys play is where I'm going with that. You could see, I could see 3-3. Three, three. three DPS, three support. Yeah. I think that could be viable you could at run, times. You could run on certain maps. You could run Lucio, uh, Zen, Anna. Yeah, and it would essentially be four DPS with certain guys playing. Oh, you know, yeah. you know Zen. You know where Zen Zen's like kind of concentrating and healing, like maybe your Genji or something like that, and it, you know just throwing an orb at him every once in a while, and just and then just protecting the back line. With, yeah, protecting the back line, and then nuking with uh, with your E and. Yeah. You know, and your right, orbs and yeah. your right clicks and stuff. And then Even you though they nerfed the right clicks, like it's still powerful. Yep. And you still got transcendence. Right. You, yeah, you get two of the most powerful defensive vaults in the game. It's going to be a big matter shift. I want to. That's why I, I can't wait for this little preseason thing to see where these guys go. Yeah, I but, think uh, contenders is going to be really interesting once this hits too. That'll yeah. be kind of a little preview, so they should really focus more on that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. But, but you yeah. know, that's that's in the works. And, I suppose. Uh, yeah, allegedly. We'll see. All right. So let's dive into the start of our previews. So yes. today we're going to work on the top tier of the um, of the league. We're, we're starting off with the easy stuff. <laughs> yeah. Like, we already, everyone already knows. Yeah. I mean, we're not going anywhere strange with this. Right. I mean, this is, we just want to get the, the conversations going with you guys. So, all right, let's hit our top our top uh, five teams we're going to do today. Okay, so these are in no particular order yet. Yeah. Like we said, bef- right before the season starts, we'll give you our power rankings 1 to 20. Yeah, and, th- and that's going to be something that we're going to continue throughout the season. Yeah, just moving in general, teams. like once we, once we establish our power rankings, every week we're going to kind of adjust those and kind of go from there, uh, talk about like the different games that they played and why that affected them. And then, you know, when we get our, our uh, Monday rolling, we'll, we'll talk more. And we want to t- get you guys into this part. Talk about the matches yeah. more on that level. And then, you know, later in the week, we'll give you our week previews and all that stuff. Because thir- starting on Thursday gives us 
a chance to grasp what's going on. Right. And when it was starting on Wednesday, it was just like, okay, we have Monday, we could talk about this. Tuesday, okay, oh shit, we got to get into previews. You know, we can't like look at the matches as much as we wanted to. Yeah. There's going to be more matches going on, but it's going to be easier for us to, you know, get the conversation rolling. All right. So let's start with the top tier. So let's talk London first. Yeah. I mean, we'll talk the defending champions. Yeah. Defending champs. They, they didn't do a whole lot in the off season, but they didn't really need to. Yep. Uh, all like one of their big things was, Signing, uh, I not I'm not even gonna try to pronounce his real name, but Coach Eight One Five, yeah, uh, Kwang Bak Kim, I think is his name. Uh, but yeah, like he, so new head coach. Then they transferred closer to Dallas. Uh, they signed guard, and then they signed Krillin, who is a yeah guard is a DPS, and then Krillin is a support. Backups Not mostly. Sign. Yeah, mostly backups, just because, like, hey. You never know. Yeah, you never know. They they dropped a lot of their backups uh, at the end of the season uh, because they wanted to focus on just their main lineup. Which proved to be a smart move. Yes. It, it took a little bit. Right. Um, they had that lull towards the end of the season. I mean, I'm not looking for much different from this team. Yeah, no. They're, Gonna be scary, and then you empower these DPS heroes exactly. with this new meta, and you with, got Fleta or uh, Fleta Profit. No, you got Profit. You um, got Bird Ring. Bird Ring. <laughs> you've got I, it, like with just the versatility that their roster already has, and the characters that and the yeah the characters that they play. That this meta is gonna be so good for them. Yeah, and they're but it doesn't matter what meta it is because they're going to be good no matter what. Yeah, and the guys returning, I mean, you still got gesture. I think the biggest know. the biggest thing with them is just making sure they don't get bored. Yeah. <laughs> it's like one of those things did. like like they did. And then, you know, burnout burn and all that. Yeah, and the way the schedule's set up now, I think they're going to be just fine. Yeah. I mean, I'm looking for them to be kind of where they were last year, where they were last year. They're going to be in that when you're starting to whittle teams down, you're going to be going, oh, there's London still. Right. You know, and it, it's not going to change much from last year. I think uh, Krillin, I think they're going to do a little bit more in and outs with Krillin and uh, Bedosin, from what I've heard. You do need a little, you know, you need you needed some, some swapping here and there, but they learned their lesson early on last year. You don't need two rosters. Right, exactly. Um, I mean, what sure. else more can you say about London that we yeah. haven't already gone over a De- thousand different times at this point? Yeah, defending champs, they got gods at pretty much every position. Yeah. I just want I can't wait to see Prophet play more Reaper now. Yes. Oh, God. Well, I mean, he was like, when Reaper was shit, he was like, when they played on point two Anubis. Yeah. He was still wreck- wrecking people. Right. Like, I, I can't even imagine <sighs> what it's going to be like when he's in there. Yeah. With with the armor changes and all of that. It's going to be yeah. insane. And we, did, we didn't really talk about the Brigitte changes to her rally. They're basically taking her out of the game. So, I mean, I'm sure situationally she's going to work into things like the Slambulance thing, all that stuff. But that's a whole other story. Yeah. All right. So, let's move on to the next team, which was... Uh, the Peyton Manning Indianapolis Colts of the Overwatch League, the New York XL. So let's talk about them. And uh, they made a couple of additions and a big subtraction in my a mind. Of, a couple of subtractions for sure. So they lost um, – Who he wasn't really their uh, – he was just kind of an analyst for them. He wasn't like fully a coach, but he was still a big part of this team. Uh, and that's Wizard Young. Uh, so they let him and uh, Janice go, and they both went to Washington. And that's about the only good part of Washington. And we'll yeah. get more into that in the one in of the, the later future. episodes. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so losing both of those guys is pretty big. But then at the same time, that really opens it up a little more for for how they are doing that. Um, it seems like they want a static tank line. Yeah. Mecco and Mono were great anyway. Right. And they don't, yeah, they don't want to do the the swap out for the one map per game that they would swap Janice in, which was almost always a hybrid map. Yeah. Or, an, an, or maybe an escort map yeah. here and there. Depending and, on which one yeah. it was. And. The thing that they did, which is scary, they're uh, them in San Francisco think on the same levels, uh, apparently. Yeah. <laughs> they added Flower 
and Nene, two godlike DPS. Now, Flower was a little off in contenders, but we, and like in our conversation on uh, Overwatch Recall, I, I think it was more of a, I know I'm in the league thing. Right. It's like you get that junior that declares in... In college football. Uh, and they and get like, to the bowl game and they're just like... Nah, yeah. I'm good. Yeah. It, it, it's it, We'll see what happens. But Nene was big. No, and I understand a lot of people's hesitation with it because he did like completely drop off. Like he wasn't even like it, it was hard. So to have somebody not care like that is definitely worrisome. But I still feel like New York is going to get the most out of him. And if they don't, they still have three of the best DPS in the league. Yeah, and <laughs> you might as well call it four with Nene. Yeah. So the one thing, the one question I have, it's really interesting when they sign these DPS players. I'm, we're talking about them more than London because London really didn't do anything, and you yeah. know what the hell they're going to do. Right. This is more interesting because yeah. so you have the best tracer in the league, one of them. Yes. And Sabiobi. Yeah. So, which we found out is basically his only character at this point. Yeah. Because. Okay on Widow, okay on other stuff, McCree's and other hit scans. But not nearly as yeah. dominant as he is when he's playing Tracer. Now, Tracer could be back in the meta with the armor changes and the, and the yes. Brigida nerfs and all that kind of stuff. But is Nene going to be the guy? Right. With Libero. Because you can't count Libero out because of his hero pool. Yeah. I mean, and it now, doesn't matter what the, the things are or like what the meta is. Libero is going to be in there because his hero pool is so expansive, and he's just so damn good at so many different characters. You can't yeah. not have that guy out there. So it's basically going to be who, which other guy are you going to put out to complement that particular version of Libero? Yeah, <laughs> and you have Flower, who's I kind of think he's like Pine B, yeah, B level Pine. It's so you have two. You have two guys that are Widowmaker, uh, kind of Widowmaker McCree. Yeah, Widowmaker McCree. I Soldier, imagine they probably have picked hit up. Scan. Uh, yeah, just hit scan in general. And then Nene is just uh, unbelievable. I- I'm thinking we're going to see more Nene, Libro. Yeah. I think in, they're in gonna, my opinion, they're going to complement each other really, really well. Yeah, and you really don't have really don't have to talk about. Do we have to talk about Jonak and Ark? Right. I mean, with uh, the way except that, for we get to see Anna. Yeah, we get to see Jonak play Anna. <laughs> Uh, and I'm so everyone should be so excited about that because if you think his Zenyatta was good, wait until you see his Anna. It's yeah. absolutely disgusting. Uh, if you haven't seen any of it, do yourself a favor and go watch the hundreds. Oh of, yeah, <laughs> of videos that you can see of this dude playing Anna because it is unbelievable, ridiculous. And we were talking earlier um, when he was on ladder in Korea. He had the top three Anna accounts, like one, two, three, ranked like, in Korea. And that's just, not, it's not just Anna. Overall, yeah. top three accounts were all him, all playing Anna. Yeah. That's all he played. And he did it with three different accounts and got to top three. That is insane. That is, like, just mind-bogglingly crazy. Yeah, because you'd think, and one in there, he, his, he would be maining Zen or something like that. You'd think so. But, but no. I mean, this was when Anna was definitely at her peak. I and, think she's back, though. In, oh, definitely. That. But, I mean, th- when when that was happening... That and, was when she had, had that. that. That was when she was, like, really powerful. But even still, yeah. to be top three in Korea of all countries yeah. with three separate accounts to maintain that... And bear in mind, there's guys like Ruja Hong playing on ladder. Yeah, exactly. Who's, you know, the... That, set, that's the, what I'm the, saying. Yeah. Like, with Cor- being in Korea... On the Korean ladder, like that's that that's ridiculous. Just, this dude is a crazy person. Yeah, no, and I love it. Where they finish, it, it, it's much like London, close to where last year. What they need to do is focus towards the end. Yes, they need to they, keep their focus, and they need to just they got yeah. They that's and, really it is focus and, and, and staying on task and and doing what they gotta do to just win. Yeah, and. The, the last meta with the Brigida meta that came in screwed them up. Yeah. I think. Because you found out CBOB is a great tracer, probably the best tracer, but. Probably one of the most clutch about, tracers in the, yeah. in, in the game. But yeah, that's that's all he's got. And really. he's an above, as far as the league goes, he's above yeah. average on everything else. Right. But the way they were going and the momentum that they had going, you needed him to be at that level. 
like, and, uh, and something besides Tracer. Yeah, yeah. And, and you just wasn't able to produce that. So I think they they went out there and they they did themselves a favor and and basically ensured themselves that they are set with those because obviously we know that their tanks and their supports are going to be fine, and we yeah. know that they're going to come up big. So it's it, it's whatever. Okay, let's move on to the next team on our on our top tier list. We're gonna go with the Philadelphia Fusion. So they made a few changes here and there. Again, like not a whole lot of changes for most of these teams in the top. Like they were in the top for a reason. They had some really, really excellent seasons and they had really top tier rosters. So they didn't really need to make a whole lot of changes. Uh the biggest yeah. thing for the fusion was dropping the guys that they did and Shadowburn, Joe Meister, and Dayfly. Yeah, um, and then they traded Hotba as well. Yeah, and, so, or, or cut him, and he's yeah. uh, he's on uh, he's on uh, the happy pan- or the sad pandas or wherever they are. Yeah, he went to the Korean hunters. contenders for a little bit, and then they picked up that roster, and he just came with that. Yeah, so uh, that that helps them out a little bit. They have a little bit of experience, but, but we'll get to them when we get to our that tier. Yes, that. So, tier. They, yeah, that tier. They, <laughs> and they they picked up Elk. And they uh, named. They picked up a couple of new coaches. They didn't really change much, though. No, they really didn't. Um, and they didn't. But need they to. don't need to. Yeah. I think the the Hotba thing clears things up a little bit. Yeah. I He's not. He, the, it's not that he was a bad player. He was. He was good in certain situations. It was similar to Janice. Yeah. Good in certain situations, and others he was just terrible. The other guys got rid of it. Other than Shadowburn, were just bah, well, whatever. I did. I think Joe Meister just dressed up like. Uh, the cat diva skin. That's the only yeah. thing I remember him from. <laughs> um, and Dave Fly, they, they played him like twice and he was terrible. Yeah. Um, but, so whatever. But th- their roster is great. Yeah. They, you know, they proved a lot. And I think the Fraggy or, or um, Sato. Sato with Poco works better than putting Hotba in there in spots and all that. Right, because Poco keep... is just so damn good. Yeah, and we found that out in the playoffs. Yeah. Because everyone was like, I don't know about, you know, Hotba's good, Poco's better, but, you know, I'm like, uh... Poco's just... Uh, the eye test for me was Poco should be in there all the time. Yeah. And, and... Uh, you know, Sato should be in there most of the time, too. Fraggy yeah. on, you know, maybe your King's Row or something like that, but... Right. You know, Sato proved he's a good Reinhardt, too. Yeah. Um, And, you know, some of these main... It, and off tank guys too with this meta that's coming up, you're gonna see more of like the their some of their DPS yeah. prowess too. Oh yeah, uh, you're and gonna then, see more of the Zarias and Roadhogs and those kind of things. I think. And then we already know that they're really so they're really set with their supports in uh, in Boombox and Neptuno. And Neptuno. Yeah. I mean, fucking Neptuno. Remember, it's like yeah, never forget. That dude played after he got hernia surgery. Yeah, and he had other stuff. Yeah, he had dude a whole like, lot of health problems going in last year, and he was just... Nope, I'm not going to... Yeah, not taking I'm, me no, out. No, I'm playing. You can carry me out of this one. Yeah, you're going to you're gonna take me out on a stretcher to get me out of here. And uh, DPS-wise, I mean, Carpe and um, EQL, Yeah, you're not going to top that. No. But too many teams aren't going to top that. I mean, <laughs> that duo. and Probably, there's like... The two teams that we just talked about are really the only ones that even contend with with well, that yeah. DPS lineup. And Carpe can play other heroes, by the way. Yeah, some some of you guys have just uh, he's known for being the best widow, but, but his he, other he stuff. He can play other hit scans. <laughs> he can play other characters. Like yeah, they'll be just fine, especially yeah. when you're pairing him with a guy like EQO, whose projectile is just ridiculous. Yeah. And Carpe can play, you know, Tracer, and I'm sure he can play Ash and uh, McCree and yeah. whatever else needs to be played. The one, the one thing though that could be weird with the all, the amount of hit scans coming up in this meta, if you know, it pans out the way we kind of think it does, Fire is not going to be used as much. Yeah. So that takes something away, for, a little bit away from EQO. And I mean, and, but that um, just means he's going to be playing more Genji, which yeah, is even yeah, better for them because he's a crazy good Genji. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Situationally, I'm sure Farah is always going to be viable in this league. But uh, in certain maps, like Farah is just she's always yeah. viable because there's certain places where you can just chill out and nobody can really hit you because you're just lobbing bombs from yeah, the, God knows how far. <laughs> yeah, especially on like Eichenwald first point, and you got like the um, what's it? The garden, 
Uh, parts uh, of Ilios, the, uh, you can do yeah. it. You can the Garden on Oasis. Is yeah. that the Garden? Whatever the one is with the 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 fucking lattice shrubbery on the oh outside the one, one where where uh the not Prophet had the most ridiculous kill we've ever seen. No, uh, which one? <laughs> um, the center. I think that's the not the center. One, not the not the not the one with the the round thing. The other one with the garden. The oh square yeah, one. yeah, that one. Yeah, definitely. The, yeah, Pharaoh would. Yeah, that is garden. Oh, the, you mean the rip, the rip tire that he had where he killed everybody from behind? Or no, where he was tracer and he he oh. jumped up the, the oh, lift the... thing and and blinked to, right into. Uh, into Farah and oh, yeah. murdered her in midair. <laughs> I forgot about that one. That was, I'm like, I don't okay. know how you forgot about that. That was one of the most ridiculous well, kills I'm, I've ever seen in my life. I'm a prophet fanboy. You this know, is true. I'm going over the the five kill in the finals. The yeah, right. the the rip tire where he killed all of the fuel. The ridiculous Hanzo shots. I'm <laughs> yeah. Well, that was just when we established that Tracer is an anti Farah. Yeah, player. yeah. T- <laughs> She's pretty much the best anti fera in his hands on that thing with the the bouncy castle. Yeah. <laughs> okay. As as profits playing her. Let's talk about Philadelphia now. I've gone on a we've gone on a profit <laughs> tangent, but yeah, they're gonna be they're gonna be up there. They're definitely in the playoffs, in my opinion. Oh, for barring sure. anything weird with especially with the playoffs are being structured, I they're definitely in that top. And they're they're meta. So, they're like a meta soundproof kind of. And, and all these teams are really. On top of that, this is a meta that's going to favor the way that they like to play yeah. as well. Which is aggressive, fast, and, uh, you know, just. Similar to how the Chinese team was playing in the, in the Overwatch World Cup, just that, like, you're going to think that we're doing poorly, but then all of a sudden everyone's going to be dead and we're all still going to be alive. Yeah. You're going to be like, wait, where was the coordination? They're just like, oh, it was there. Yeah, and it's just a, different. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and a lot of that is Neptuno and Boombox yeah. doing things. You know, you're like, oh, people are like, oh, well, you know, they're they're okay. I'm, I oh, he just had a three kill with Mercy. Yeah, Battle Mercy. Okay, <laughs> he's gonna do better now that armor's reduced too. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm sure he'll he'll be definitely playing Mercy. He'll be playing lot. Mercy. He'll play some Lucio. Uh, Boombox. You might even see him playing some Anna. I mean, if they go one support, they go one support. Sometimes Boombox runs out Roadhog or, you know, they got that stuff going. Because you don't have to worry about losing a DPS to play Brigida right now. Right. Yeah. Which, you know, I don't, I didn't mind that. There's something weird about watching Fleta and Prophet play Brigida instead of something shooting. Yeah. Yeah. Watching someone watch some shoot something, it, it, it just was weird. The only the only person that I really worked for was uh, was Mickey. Mickey, yeah, his best character. Yeah, by far. Rest in peace, Mickey. Yeah, you're not gonna be able to play very much in this season. <laughs> yeah, Brigitte's not gonna be viable. Rest in peace, Mickey's playtime. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Th- I mean, that's really all we needed to go on with uh, with Philly. Now the next two teams, they're conflicting views between other people. Yes. And where they're going to finish. But also, with each other, Yeah, and this is our new rivalry, this is our new uh, <laughs> Celtics, Lakers, or, you know, that kind of thing. Yan- Yankees, Red Sox, Ohio State, Michigan. We're talking uh, LA Gladiators and Seoul. Yeah. Uh, let's talk about the Gladiators first. Okay, let's do that. They're probably the more... I, I, I voted for Seoul more on this than... Yeah, I, the, I'm just a... I for whatever that, reason, I'm a huge homer for... For the Gladiators, well, I just really like that team, and they did a they did a lot. They kind of disappointed us at the end of last year in the playoffs. Yes, with and that whole the whole weird thing with Fissure and yeah. all that kind of wacky stuff that was going on there. So yeah, we've already we've already harped enough about Fissure being uh, leaving and getting traded to Seoul. They released I Remix, Asher, and Silk Thread three. Role players on the team, right? And you know, once uh, hydration got more vi- like the way he he started playing, he started playing better and better and better. You saw less and less and less play time for Asher. Yes, and they just kind of if we need Tracer, yeah. someone will play her. I and, mean, and, with with the way that hydration and Surefour Surefour were playing, yeah, how could you not? Yeah, and Surefour can play decent enough Tracer at that point, right? And then once Tracer kind of went away, and it was just mostly Widowmaker and a projectile, or just situational DPS yeah. of your choice. 
then it just worked really, really yeah. well in the favor of hydration. Which is sure for was going to be in there no matter what. Yeah. Because he's just that damn good. But yeah, that's, that's all huge, especially considering what they ended up going out and getting. They needed another, they needed another DPS just because those two were great. But you need when you get a, yeah, you need a third. And when you get a chance to get a guy like they did, Decay, you gotta you, jump on it. You, you you get that guy. Yeah, you get that guy, and you know it could see less playing time for hydration as much as we were just talking uh, about it. But that's just a sacrifice you gotta make if you won't win. Yeah, and you know it's gonna be one of those situations where you know he could go in and out for sure for it or hydration, depending on the situation, yeah, what you the, need, and all that. Exactly. And they did lose Fisher, but they got Roar. Yeah. Who is not Fisher by any means. No. But it's gonna be. But he is really right good. up there. Yeah, he's uh, going to be as, a good... As far as the guys that were available to be a main tank, he was the top... He was the top guy. Same with Takei. He was the top DPS. And that's yeah. the big thing with the Gladiators. Is they went out and they got the two... The, they, they filled holes that they had with the two best players that they could have filled those holes with. Yeah, exactly. And, and they already had a really solid roster because they have two of the best supports in the league with Big Goose and Shaz... They yeah. already had some really strong DPS. They already had a really good off tank. Yeah, Bishu stepped it up this the, yeah. this year. That was one. That was one of the most impressive things I think was watching him get better and better. Yeah, the evolution of Bishu was really fun to watch. And you know, and it was one of those things where it, it kind of like went under the radar, and it was like yeah. all of a sudden. You know, you're like, yeah, is it Fisher? And then he wasn't in there. And you're like, and you know what? It might be him. It just yeah. might be him playing. Well, I think he learned a lot playing with Fisher. Definitely. In that time, I said Fisher about fifteen times there. I, anyway, <laughs> the, uh, the and then they added they added uh, Ripa, and that was during that whole the, the debate they had there with yeah. the, like they were getting rid of Big Goose and Shaz, but they added another. <laughs> they added another Swede. Another Swede. But uh, I mean, yeah, that's a, that's another big addition. I think it's it's going to be more just to to give those guys some rest. Yeah. Than anything else. Because Big Goose had his moments where he was kind of off. Yeah. And you could tell, like, you just see it in his face where he was, he was exhausted. Yeah. And you, you could absolutely tell. And there were, there was a few times where Shaz was the same way. So I, I feel like it's just adding one more guy in there to just kind of give each of them a rest and just so they can all be one happy support family. Yeah. And I think <laughs> now, as far as where they finish, obviously we think they're going to be in the top five teams in the league. Yeah, uh, they they are they're also another meta proof kind of yeah a team. I mean, you have Shaz uh, with the amount of heroes that are kind of viable right now. Yeah, how much May is he going to be playing? Right, and then also, <laughs> I mean, his tracer. We already know that his Zenyatta is amazing. I'm sure that his uh, and it's debatable of which one you want to play Anna because. Big Both, Goose is a yeah. really good Anna. Big Goose is, is good, also yeah. a really good Anna. Big Goose is good on Lucio. But yeah, then yeah. if you're going to have one of them play Anna, it's probably going to be Shaz because if you're going to have Lucio in there, you want Big Goose playing it because yeah. he's probably one of the best uh, Lucios in the world. Yeah. And I think it was one of those things, too, where he was getting bored playing Mercy. Yeah. Like, oh, absolutely. Like 90% of the league, except for maybe Neptuno. <laughs> yeah. Maybe Neptuno and Ark. Yeah. Well, Ark didn't... I mean, Ark was like, yeah, I'm making X amount of dollars holding this hose for Jonah. Right. <laughs> oh, shit, I got to res somebody. Hold like, on. I got to go. Hang on. Yeah, I got to go res him, and then I'll, I'll be right back. I'll be back. right back, Jonah. Don't die. You're right. Don't I just got to not die, basically. That's, <laughs> that's really it. But they're going to be they're gonna be a tough out for anybody playing them. Yeah, for sure. It's going to be interesting to see, though, with the new guys, how they how they do. But you, you got a good core of... I mean, the, the first couple of weeks might be a little shaky just as they get yeah. used to each other, but I feel like they, they have a pretty... It, it's not the most difficult schedule for the first stage, so I don't think it's going to be all that big a deal for them. Yeah. It, and I mean, the, they're starting right off against Seoul, so that's tough, but yeah. I think that's going to be one of those games where they're going to come in and they're going to be ready for it, because obviously it's the first game, so they've got months to prepare for it and they want to you know they want to rub it in fissure i'm sure they got they want to rub it in fissure they want to they, they they've got a few bones to pick yeah with soul in general what the fuck now i'll cut that as out. misfit gets some headshots over here 
Yeah, that doesn't happen in a regular game, so... <laughs> <laughs> at, le- at least that way. Right. Occasionally with Hanzo for some reason, but I don't yeah. know why I'm... Playing that stupid Mountain Blade game, I got better shooting a bow. It's the... It's the... The, the, the pace. timing. Yeah. yeah. It makes a big difference. Yeah. I, I gotta get my timing back. Right. Because... I'm getting back into playing, but they changed the meta, and now I'm like, oh, fuck. Right. Because I was, like, doing the, I'm going to learn some tanks, and now I'm like, because oh, I'm not great at DPS. Yeah, and, me either. Uh, That's why I play support. Yeah. I, I, yeah, I could be in that boat. Of course, the supports I play are getting aren't going to be as viable. I like playing Moira. Right. Um, I'm going to have to learn Lucio or something. Lucio's really fun. I, yeah. I want to get better at Lucio, honestly. And I'm going to get better at Lucio and Anna. Anyway. Yeah, I love Anna. So, so fun. but yeah, let's uh, let's talk about the, this last team. The last team, okay. Now we're including them in mostly for by by me. You and by all means, guys, down below. Let talk. Let's talk about this. Not just this. Not just this pick of Soul, the Soul Dynasty, but any of the ones we got going on. Let's you know get get down there and tell us what you think. Now, obviously, we're going to reveal the rest of the stuff later. You know, next couple of weeks. But Soul Dynasty. They made the big a big addition in picking up Fissure. Yes, and they got rid of some dead weight on the team. Let's just kind of right. Well, go they, with that. They you got know. a couple of uh, they got a couple of new coaches, uh, which was huge because I feel like that was one of the biggest things that held this team back was their coaching was god awful. Uh, yeah. Hey, let's put Rouge Hong as a main tank. That was a really good idea. Great idea. Worked really, really well. And if you guys were listening last year, I lost my mind on many fucking occasions because of that. Yeah. Uh, I apparently, then I, I was doing that, but well, maybe they're thinking, they, they see him, they, they can, no. It was yeah. almost as bad as putting Taimu on main tank. Yeah. I, I kind of wondered if... At Ka- least Taimu uh, had a couple of good games with it. I wonder if Kai Kai was a consultant. Yeah, right? <laughs> my God. So yeah, they... they <laughs> put, gonna put Miro on Genji next? Yeah. <laughs> Uh, anyway, so they they brought in KDG and uh, Changun uh, as their coaches. Uh, KDG is head coach, Changun is the assistant coach. Uh, I, I really don't know all that much about these guys, but anybody is better, better than, than what, what they, they had. had. Yeah, and they got rid of Gambler, Miro, Wakid, yes. Zephyr, Kuki. They kind of went through a lot of guys, but the thing is, is they picked up Marvel and Michelle. Yes, who are going to help out immensely because they needed the off tank stuff. They also, need, you know, they needed a, a support too, too, because uh, Toby had his moments where he was good. I think he's going to be back though, because you're going to have more of the uh, the Lucio. Yeah, and he was okay at Mercy, but he was again yeah. another guy that like you could tell he didn't want to play Mercy. Yeah, he just played it because he had to. Yeah, and you also had, uh, I mean, you always have you have Fleta. Yeah, which you know. You have Rouge Hong, who, I mean, you as much see as his we kinda, Anna more. Yeah, we could see his Anna, and even though he did not have a great season last year, I think it was just the, the team environment and everything in general had a lot to do with that. He just didn't really get a chance to shine yeah. at all. So I think now that he's going to be around a stronger team, the weaknesses that he does have because of what he where he's at in his career... Uh, I, I think they'll be able to cover that up a little bit better now. Yeah, and I also think too that the way they were running the team with the because they were doing all that switching yeah. every map, they were switching in one tank and a yeah. support, and and now they can kind of have a little bit more set of okay, these are the people that are playing most of the time. We're gonna switch out when we absolutely have to. Type of situation. He's not getting. You're not gonna get subbed out for Guido or exactly. whatever the hell was going on with that. Oh God. I think. He, <laughs> I think this is gonna be. It's gonna be a more stable environment. Yes. And I think they're gonna be kind of where we and everybody else thought they were gonna be last year. Because they do have a lot of experience on this team. Right, and they're not gonna. But they're not gonna be what. They'll be a lot closer to what everybody expected them to be last year. But obviously. The expectations for this team going into last year was were so ridiculously high that there was no way they were going to live up to that. Even if they did play really, really well, there was yeah. no way they were going to live up to the oh they're going to go forty and zero. Yeah, yeah, no, that was not going to happen. And that was one of those things we were like, yeah, they're probably the best team before the season started. They're probably the best team. 
I don't think they're going to go undefeated. Yeah. No. Yeah. The, we caught that one pretty quick. Yeah. We did not know that they were going to collapse the way that they did. No. But, you and know. We didn't, you know, the, but we I didn't expect the, the, we were saying the grind was going to affect people and yeah. teams. We didn't expect it to hit as hard as it did, as fast as it did with a lot of these teams. And they were one of them. Yeah. They were sure. season, or season, uh, stage three going in. We were like, okay. They should be able to turn it around a little bit, and they just fell off the table because they were shot. Yeah, and yeah. By that point, it was just it was too late, and the uh, coaches but, were weird and all that. Yeah, but I also think that this is going to be a really good environment for Fisher, and I think yeah. he's going to really help them kind of stay away from that and and just keep them motivated and just you know be the dominant tank that we know Fisher is. Yeah, and I think. He's going to be more comfortable. He obviously wasn't comfortable with the mixed languages and all that stuff going yeah. on. Which, whatever. I, If it makes you more comfortable, fine. It's right. going to be great. And I think he has something to prove now that everyone slammed him on the off, in the offseason for all the stuff that he was doing with the, the gladiators towards the end. And, and just the random weird streams that he was having, mm. talking about the whole situation, like... Hopefully now he's just like done with all that. He can put it behind him and yeah. he can just go out and play. Because when he is focused and he is playing at his peak level, he's the best tank in the league. Him and Gesture are one and one A. Yeah. So I mean, you got you got that going, and the new guys coming in. I think it might take a little bit in the beginning of the season to get him rolling. Yeah. But I think I think they're going to be there at the end. Now, but to also give a, some consistent help to. Uh, Fletta, Fletta is going to be a huge thing for this team because yeah. there was also times where like where Fletta would just show signs of being one of the most dominant DPS in the league, and then other times where he would just get completely shut down because he was just mega focused. Yeah, like it, it was like almost MMO aggro. Right. <laughs> Fletta steps out and everybody runs by everybody else. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much like yeah. It, it, yeah, it, so I, I think that's going to be a huge, huge boost to this team. Yeah, I and think I, so I expect too. them to be in the top five, top six. Yeah, I, th- that's why we, um, where they finish, probably, I want to say top five, that's why we have them in the top tier. Bottom of the top tier, top of the mid tier. Yeah. Somewhere in there. They're either going to just, I think they're just going to slide into the, not have to be in the playoff. Right. Or... Just be at the top of the list that the, the teams have to play for the final two playoff spots. Right. I, yeah, I think that's going to be right there. So I, I think that's a that's a good place to leave it off for our top tier. Yeah. Uh, I mean, those are the teams that we put there, and we can kind of tease some of the teams that are in our mid tier. Yeah. And I think you guys kind of have a good idea of who we think that is going to be there. Yeah. Uh, based on who we haven't talked about yet, and how we how high we talked about some of these other teams. Uh, I think there's going to be some surprises on here. But yeah. just in general, uh, keep an eye out for for yep. more of these videos. We've got at least three more of these to go. Yeah, we got three more to go, and we have one of them is a miscellaneous one. So if you're not you're thinking, think about what teams we think are like up in the air. Yeah, and uh, it could be one of many. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> well, and it's not my team, so you can count them out. Anyway, <laughs> <laughs> so guys, that is going to do it for our first uh, season preview for the 2019 season top tier version. All of you new guys, thanks a lot for coming in and joining us. Don't forget to hit a like, hit a subscribe. You know, if you like what you're hearing, all of our social media links are going to be down below. Join us on Twitter, Discord. We're going to be doing a lot more with this year coming up, especially when the, you know we get closer to the season. We're 37 days away. All you guys that have been joining us, thanks a lot. We appreciate all of your support, all the views you've given us, all the conversations you've had with us in the past, and let's keep them going. So you guys have a great day, and we will talk to you later. Catch you guys on the next one. Later.